I'd like to thank you for joining the 24-hour film festival this year. Uh, my name is Chris McAllister. I'm one of the co-organizers of the event, and this presentation is hopefully going to help you win. It also might other help make other people win too, but at least you'll all be sort of on the same page. So. For those of you that are new, here's how it kind of works. Contestants are challenged with creating a five minute or less film that contains three randomly drawn elements. A prop, a line of dialogue, and a location. So an example from previous years had been the prop was a hand drawn illustration. A line of dialogue was how about a magic trick from The Dark Knight. And the location was looking through something. So looking through a window, a keyhole, reflection, even through someone's legs after a poor hand of strip poker. Yeah, anyways, so now that you know the format, let's talk about what you can expect. Starting at 4.30 p.m. or some agreed upon time, contestants will gather in the same place to review the rules, get their forms and waivers signed, and to learn the three random elements that will need to be included in their video. All three elements need to be included in their video. Uh, these elements are randomly drawn live to ensure that everyone is playing on the same field for their production. Then at 5.30 p.m. or some other very precise time, shortly after the drawing of the three elements, all filmmakers will be released into the wild to make their video. So this presentation is designed to help you step through the most optimal method for completing your film on time. We've got a lot of experience with this and we find that some teams kind of get stuck in one stage or another. So we'll cover some tips and tricks for production as well as for planning your idea out. So let's get started. So let's actually let's start with the end in mind. You need to really communicate a story with a beginning and a middle and an end that incorporates the three drawn elements in some creative way. So here's the criteria we'll be using to evaluate your submissions in descending order. So least important would be technical merit, believe it or not. Um, things that we'll be looking for is did you do your best to try to capture good audio? Are the video edits nice and clean? Did you hear the director ever say, oh, okay, go, or anything like that inside of your final recording? That's bad. Um, the next most important thing would be your acting. So did your actors give us uh, some strong effort to seem believable? Do the conversations sound like real conversations, and did they avoid overacting? The next most important thing uh, out of the competition is the integration of the three elements. Uh, this one we really pay attention to. Uh, do the three items kind of look bolted on? That's sometimes really a telltale sign of someone pre-producing their video, and we're getting pretty good at spotting this. So overall, uh, the last thing you need to be uh, make sure is that this, your film is entertaining to watch. If it, we screened it in front of a couple hundred people, would they find it amusing or engaging? What did our pre-selection committee think? So, it's exactly now 24 hours from the submission deadline. It's at this point that most new people have this little look of panic on their face. And so you'll need to shake this off immediately. You'll even see some other teams storming out of the kickoff as if they've got the next like Spielberg classic already fully formed in their minds. And this can seem a little bit intimidating. But we're kind of here to tell you that you know the confidence you're seeing is really just a very thin veil over the panic that they're experiencing. Everyone's pretty much in the same boat at this point. And I've got some good news though. Um, there is actually a good way to do this. Uh, from our experience in film festivals and producing video for clients, we've discovered there's some really good approaches to handling the little time you have in order to be the most effective. So we're going to share that with you right now, and it'll go something like this. Um, you're going to hopefully spend the majority of your time doing the planning. And when I say planning, this is getting an idea, scripting it out, storyboarding it, and coming up with you know who's going to be in your film. You need to spend the most time here because if you don't have this nailed down, you should not be shooting anything and I have no idea what you would edit. Um, but speaking of editing, the next thing that's most important here that you're going to spend the next amount of time on is, is actually editing, not filming. This is by far one of the most important steps you take uh, once you've got your footage because um, it really can determine how your film feels by how you cut it. So you want to spend as much time editing as you do filming, if not more, if possible. Uh, next you've got your filming. So this happens in the middle, but it's probably the least important out of all of it. This is where your production plan gets really put into action. And if you've done your planning right, this process should go quickly and the results will be awesome. Okay, so if, now that you've got your time figured out like that, now we're going to look at, let's say you've got a team. Now if you're making this project entirely on your own, then you'll be assuming all of the roles and responsibilities in a simple video production. I'm going to break down the different roles that, you know, if you do have a team, would be useful to have. First one is assistants. These are people who will do anything to get their name in the credits. 
um, and you got to treat them with a little bit of respect because they're taking time out of their day to help you out. So um, they can help out in many ways. They could be uh, organizing uh, food for your team so that they can have something to eat while they're working, getting coffee, um, anything like that. Look after them. The next group that's really important is the location or legal manager. You know, if you have someone handle all the forms and paperwork throughout the day and scout ahead for locations to see if they can be cleared, it's an incredibly helpful person to come or have around. We've seen some entries that fall short because they didn't have the paperwork done and you really need to have the paperwork done. Um, so take care of this person too. Next thing we've got is actors, or are actors. Your on-screen talent doesn't need a trailer and a bowl full of brown M&Ms, but they do need to be somewhat part of the creative process, so don't just order them around like they're, you know, whatever. Don't do it. Uh, another important person is the script writer. This person should be someone who can synthesize people's ideas and write convincing dialogue. Um, you'll be working with the actors and the director, but ultimately you kind of have final say over the actors. Uh, next, uh, you're going to be looking at the camera operator and the editor. Hopefully this is the same person for logistical reasons, which we'll get into later, uh, but they will be responsible for capturing the footage and making sure that the audio levels are appropriate and then working with the director to make the final edit. And the director. This person needs to be easygoing and flexible in stressful situations. Nobody likes working with a director who loses their temper or flips out when things get stressful. Uh, directors who can take advice from their team and produce a piece of work that represents a shared vision is a very tough thing to do. But if you want to be liked by your peers after this experience, we suggest you give it a good try. Uh, the director has the ability to make a final decision on an issue if you've got some group members who are unable to agree on something. They are the arbiter in the court case, but they are not God. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. All right, this section here is important. I'm going to harp on it a little bit here. This is about getting that paperwork. A film festival is a tricky thing to organize. It's, it's even trickier when you bring the legal process into it. So for this festival, you absolutely must have the following forms filled out and organized. I'm going to step through them real quick here. The first one is the waiver of liability. This shows that you understand completely how McMaster, anything or anyone related to McMaster, is in no way responsible if something happens to you during your involvement with this production. This has to be filled out at the kickoff. Next you have the terms and conditions. Now this document outlines your team name, how to get in contact with you, uh, the details about your team. It must also be filled out at the kickoff event by your team leader. Next we've got the minor release form. Now, if you have someone under the age of 18 participating on your team, you must have their parent or guardian give permission for them to participate. We need to have this filled out and brought to the kickoff event. And if we don't have this, your underage participant is not allowed to participate. Next, we've got the talent release form. Now, if someone shows up in your video, you have to have a talent release form for them. Now, if it's a crowded scene outside and you can't make the person out, you don't have to get a form, but if something is, if someone is featured in your film in some identifiable way, we must see uh, a matching talent release form inside your package. If someone in your video is under the age of 18, there's even another thing in there that you need to have their parental consent that they're, it's okay for them to be in a movie. So all completed talent release forms must be submitted with your entry. Next we have a film permit uh, in Hamilton, so we can actually film in Hamilton with some restrictions and someone's going to come by and tell you a little bit about that. But if you film in someone's house, someone's store, someone's garage, or on their private property, you have to have a location release form. This says that you can have permission to film on their property. That's basically what it boils down to. Finally, we have a music and audio release form. Now, if you plan to have music in your presentation, even if it's if it's happening in the background, uh, we, we want a clearance form written up. And this is an agreement between you and the musician that it's it's all right to have their song in your production. And so we'll be checking this thoroughly. And if you're not tight with Jay-Z or Creedence uh, uh, Clearwater Revival, don't, don't put their music in your film. It'll just be disqualified. And now we're going to get started with how to plan your production out. Like we said before, it's so incredibly important to plan that the last thing you want to be doing is filming or editing anything that will not be used in your final production. So we're going to spend some time here talking about what planning looks like and how you should spend your time. And as we step through each process, we're going to include an idea of where in the 24-hour timeline you really should be when you reach these points using uh, this little guy right here. So here we go. Let's imagine it's 5.30 on a Friday night and the film festival has begun. All right. 
right, first things first, you're going to gather a group for the meeting, and you're going to want to do this by about 545. Find a place nearby that you can spread out, put together your ideas. The library's not a bad place, a coffee shop, anything that's 24 hours is a good place to go. Um, next thing, eh? At 6 p.m., now that you're together, you really need to break up into smaller groups. If there are more than like two of you, <laughs> uh, each group should spend about 15 or 20 minutes focusing on either the line of dialogue, the prop, or the location separately. We do this because you'll actually get some serendipitous ideas out of it. And, and you got to remember, there's no such thing as a bad idea. One group will want to think of like contexts in which the line of dialogue could be said. Another group will focus on situations where you'd find yourself in a particular location. And the third group would imagine opportunities of any kind when you would engage with a prop. And you need to write everything down just in simple point form. Because after about 20 minutes or so, you're going to want to come back and decide on the purpose of your video. Each group's going to place their ideas out on the table, and then you'll start looking for that glimmer of a story that'll emerge when you match the three things together. The idea might first be sort of absurd or incredibly depressing or strangely poetic, but I mean, that makes for a good video, so, you know, don't throw anything out. By 7 o'clock, you should really be doing an audience analysis. So this is where you think about who's going to be watching this and what makes them tick. Um, you have to imagine the audience that you really want to tell your idea to, how they're going to react. In general, your audience of this film will be very similar to you. Young, university-aged, somewhat media-savvy people. And wh So what do they want to see? What makes them laugh or feel concerned or angry and upset? And then there's the judges. I mean, they work in the film and television and entertainment industries, so what about their needs? You need to sit down and really map out how you can take that glimmer of an idea and make it interesting and appropriate for the audience that you think will be watching. Nobody wants to watch a video about the inside jokes with your friends. They really want to be included in the fun, too. Here's a neat little trick. You should consider different genres of film. Around 7.15, if you're deciding on the purpose and audience of your video, you'll also want to think about genre um, for what would make sense. So is it a situational comedy? Is it a love story? Uh, is it a spaghetti western? Is it a spy thriller? Is it a reflection on things that are happening around us? Looking at genre is a really smart idea because it's a shortcut to accessing the strengths and tropes of a particular style. And then as a filmmaker, you can decide you know, how you'd like to use or subvert those tools at your disposal. Surprising people can be very rewarding, so have a look at genre. Okay, we're getting to 7.30 o'clock at night now, and you really should be working on writing your script outline. So as I said before, uh, the most entertaining or enlightening experiences you'll have as a human being come in the form of a story. Now, we've been using them for thousands of years to do everything from make someone laugh and feel better about a situation, to learn how to be a nice person or be wary of bad people. So let's map this out. Every story needs a beginning, middle, and an end. So you have a situation that is considered normal, something happens, and then something else happens as a reaction to that first thing that happened. Almost every story follows this. Make sure yours does too, so it makes sense. The next step's important. Where's is where you're going to have, now that you have your idea, now you'd like to communicate it. It's time to take your characters and breathe some life into them. So the script writing process really requires someone to put themselves in the shoes of the character as they experience something. It's important to detail things like you know, what the setting is, who's speaking, what actions we're doing, and, and how people react. You should be at this process by no later than 8 p.m. So you'll be crafting and tweaking for the next three to three and a five hour, three and a half hours. Uh, this could be a, a team collaboration, but maybe have your actors provide some feedback as you write. Okay, so let's flash forward. Imagine you've been writing for two hours. It's now 10 o'clock at night. You really should be building a storyboard at this point. And this is where you plan the shots that match the feel that you want. Um, so what kind of shots are going to be used? How will we be uh, introduced to a scene? This is where the storyboarding takes place. And if, as you can see, a storyboard is nothing more than just a visual plan for each shot. and It kind of looks like a comic book. Uh, you don't need to give a great illustration, just stick figures and arrows to show how you want the camera to move, you know, if at all. So you want the person uh, who will be filming to be able to make final decisions on how the different shots will take place. They really must be involved in the storyboarding process. So by now, you should have a good portion of your script written, so the storyboard artist will be spending the next two hours chasing the script writer and planning out the shots. Alright, this part you might not think about, but it's so incredibly important. By midnight, you need to go to sleep. 
you really need to be sleeping in a comfortable bed because making a 24-hour film can be stressful and difficult and dealing with those situations and making good decisions with little or no sleep is even worse. So in your hand you should have a, already a completed script, a rough storyboard detailing the locations, shots that you need to get for the next day, and a completely clear conscience that it's okay to shut your eyes for seven hours and get some rest. So make an agreeable time with your team to meet the next day. Uh, a good suggestion is to go to the location of the first shot you need to get and set your alarm for 6.30 or 7 in the morning. All right, hopefully you've had a wonderful slumber. It's now time to wake up. You need to throw on some clothes, grab a quick bite, and head off to the first location for shooting. Now, if it's someone's house, that's great. Everyone can meet there easily. But if it's outside and what if it's raining, make sure that you're in contact with your whole team and set up a meeting location nearby that's dry. Maybe sure, make sure that you're, you, know, you have your cast for the first shot and you have all your working equipment. And now comes the part by about 8 a.m. You should be shooting and having your cameras rolling. So we'll, you'll be working through as many shots as, as you can capture in the same location as possible because you got to remember you don't have to film in any sequential order. You're going to use the locations as your guide and just edit it together later. So have your actors bring a change of clothes. Um, this is only really if your film needs to show like a progression of time but in the same location. Doing a shot that says two months later and your actor walks in wearing the exact same clothes can be a little, eh, a little ridiculous. Now, if you have the luxury of people helping you out, send them ahead to the next location for shooting. Have them take the location clearance forms and any props that aren't needed in the current location. Ideally, the camera operator needs to go from one location to the other with minimal setup in between. Now, if you're shooting on SD cards, another little fun trick is uh, to send the footage back to home base where your editor is waiting to patiently, you know, sort of load up and log the footage. So that way, when, the, when it's time to edit, there's nothing to copy over. So by about 12 noon, uh, this pro you should be really editing. Uh, this process is best handled by the person who shot the film very close by. Uh, if possible, have them do it. And the, and the reason for that is because you, you don't have time to have a person who has n was not present during the filming uh, thumb through footage and try to decide which of the best takes. The person who actually captured that footage will be in the best position and will remember which takes were better. It was only a couple hours ago. So make sure that your editor is familiar with video editing before starting the process. I think that goes without saying. Uh, another suggestion uh, to make this a lot smoother is just be sure to make all of your rough cuts first. Get the story down. Don't worry about the CGI sequences, opening titles, or you know closing credits, or green screen stuff, because that stuff does not matter if you don't have a complete story first. So by around 4 p.m., You've been editing now for four hours, hopefully. Uh, you should have a timeline of edited footage, and you've stressed about what takes are the best, you've dealt with production problems, and now you really have to start outputting your video. So why at 4 p.m., you ask, you still got another hour? Well, computers can have problems. They can be slow, and outputting a five-minute video, unless it's, it's done on the Super Hadron Collider at CERN, never really happens faster than five minutes. So allow 45 to 50 minutes for outputting, especially if you have any color correction or blending turned on. Alright, I'm going to give you another hot tip here. If you're cutting it close and you're not sure how long it will take to output, try outputting and track how long it takes to get to 10%. Multiply that by 10 and you'll have the answer. Now, if you can't output in time with all of the crazy effects, uh, turn them off and try outputting again. Oh, and test your footage. Before you assume it's been outputted properly, make sure it opens and that your audio and video are in sync and that you can scrub it to the very end of the file. Um, we can't accept another file afterwards. Now that that's done, you're going to uh, try to make the cutoff time for submission. And uh, when we say that the cutoff time for submission is 24 hours, we really mean it. So by this time, you should have a stack of talent release forms signed, location release forms signed, and music release forms signed. And if you've used music or talent or locations, I hope you have. Your team should be cheering with delight at the final outputted footage placed back properly. And so now you need to get to the Lions New Media Center and submit your forms and your films. You need to give yourself at least half an hour to do this so that you can arrive safely and legally. 
So a quick question about formats. We'll accept your video on a USB key and you, you will get these back, but we must have the video in either like an MP4, AVI, MOV, MKV, even WMV if you have to. Uh, size dimensions will accept any size dimension really, but uh, 720p or 1280 by 720 or 1080p, 1080 by 1920 by 1080 would be ideal. Uh, if you've got 4K footage, I think you might be in the wrong film festival, but uh, if you do, that's awesome. Uh, and that's it. By now you should be done. Uh, that wasn't really so bad. Even even if it was, it's now over. So now you can go have a celebration dinner with your crew and relax. So our, our judges will pre-screen the films and determine the top entries to be screened at the film festival. And uh, you've done it. So great work. So we'll see you at the film festival. I've saved a little bit of room here at the end for some more hot tips. Alright, I guess it goes without saying that too many chefs with their hand in the broth can start tasting like a lot of chef hands and can spoil it. You're going to definitely want to make sure that you keep your groups to a reasonable size. Generally speaking, the larger the group you have, the more work it'll keep to keep it wrangled and functional. So try to keep your group down to a core group of three to four crew and as many actors as you really need. Uh, something that's bitten people in the past is you got to test your gear and, and make sure that you've got your potential actors on standby. Um, if, if you've got plenty of good actors available on standby, uh, you should be fine. But let them know ahead of time that you might be giving them a script and they should be somewhere at a certain time. Always test your equipment the day before the competition so you can catch any problems. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. You shall not break any laws we just can't we just can't stress this enough if we see you doing something illegal on camera your film will be disqualified and, and if you murdered someone we'll report you to the police along with the nice evidence you provided so just just play it safe and stay off private property avoid abandoned buildings uh, or get up in someone's face with the camera who doesn't want you there we haven't had any legal problems in previous years and we sure don't want to start right now so um, just stay out of trouble this one's big on the technical merit side. You want to make sure that you capture the best audio you can. Um, so if you can't hear the dialogue, it's going to be really tough for people watching this film to really get what's going on. So if you don't have decent microphones, make sure you do your work inside of a house instead of out on the street. Uh, it's incredibly noisy and it'll drown your actors out if you don't. So if you're just filming with your smartphone, just be incredibly close to the subject, avoid echoey rooms, and hope for the best. Uh, people will put up with a terrible picture, but will almost never put up with a... a, 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 a you, you see what I mean. It's irritating. Just get good audio, please. Uh, next, we're going to work within our limits. So maybe you don't have a big budget camera, that's no problem, as long as you work within the limits of what you've got. Now, if you don't have external microphones, like we said earlier, make sure to keep your subjects close so your audience can hear what they're saying. And if your camera isn't that great in the light, shoot during the day time outdoors. You're going to have a much better shot, and um, it'll just look better. So that's it for the hot tips. Uh, we have one more actually, I want you guys to have some fun. So if you walk in with a solid plan, it's incredibly rewarding to see it come together. Uh, we guarantee that the memories you make during the 24 hour film festival will stick with you for a very long time, so try your best to make those memories pleasant. And thanks for paying attention to this video. So good luck at the McMaster 24 hour film festival, and we'll see you out there.